Dr. Payem, if you are watching, get your notes ready. This thing right here is just absolutely amazing. It's the perfect mix of linear algebra and multivariable calculus. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. To finish this amazing year off, we are going to generalize the result that we have talked about in Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. Dr. Payem, if you are watching, get your notes ready. This thing right here is just absolutely amazing. It's the perfect mix of linear algebra and multivariable calculus. No, seriously, get your notes and give this thing right here to your class as an exercise, as a little test question. It's so Gucci, I swear. <laughs> so you see, let's talk about this thing right here a little bit. So at first, we are integrating over r to the n, meaning we have n integrals stacked after one, another, all from negative infinity to, uh, infinity to infinity, basically, I'm sorry. Also, our factor that we are integrating over, x is out of r to the n, the vector space. Okay, and also we have to place some restrictions on a, otherwise this right here wouldn't really work. So if we have a, we want it to be element of the symmetric matrices, meaning they are sy symmetric on those sides of the main diagonal, n times n with real number entries. Also, we want this a to be positive definite, meaning all the eigenvalues in there are real and strictly positive. This is just something we need in order for this to converge right here. If you don't want this negative sign right here, then you have to take a matrix which is negative definite. Something like this should definitely exist. <laughs> and now, with this out of the way, we can actually do some cool things we have found out in linear algebra, if you have ever had this course before. So if we are dealing with symmetric matrices, we can actually diagonalize all those symmetric matrices, but not only diagonalize, we can orthogonal diagonalize those matrices. Meaning, we can take our A right here and express it as some S to the negative one, T times S. But our S is going to be orthogonal and this is going to work with all positive definite um, symmetric matrices. It's just a theorem. It's kind of hard to prove, but it's something that works out. T right here is nothing but our diagonal matrix with all the eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n right here with zero in all the other places. Our S on the other hand, well, it's like I said, an orthogonal matrix, meaning if we have an orthogonal matrix S, then the inverse of this matrix is nothing but the transposed matrix of S. So this is a little fact we are going to use right here. And now we can actually dive into, well, calculating this thing up here. It can get arbitrarily complicated to calculate something like this, but it does work out. So this generalization just works out so nicely. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So now we can rewrite this as an integral over r to the n, e to the negative. Okay, now we have the inner product. So this is just like the generalized dot product, you could say, x, comma, and now we have this right here, s transposed, t, s times x, integrated with respect to x. This is already cool. And now I would like to take a look at the inner product right here, because we can actually rewrite this a little bit. If we take the inner product of, let's say, a times x, comma y, we can actually rewrite this as just a times x transposed times y. This is just how the inner product works, even with matrices in here. But we can actually change the order of x and a if we just distribute this transposed into everything. So we have x transposed times a transposed y. Okay, you see? And, well, if we put this right here into parentheses, you can actually see that this right here is equal to, well, the inner product of x with a transposed times y. And this is actually what we are going to use. We are here at the moment and we want to get here. So meaning this right here is nothing but an integral over r to the n. And then we have e to the negative inner product of, now putting this s transposed to this side as just s times x comma t s times x integrated with respect to x. We already came pretty far with all those restrictions placed on a. And now we can, well, move on because we can make a change of variables in here. In other words, 
introduce a little substitution. So we want to let our s times x be equal to some vector y, for example. We are working in more than one dimension at the moment, so when differentiating both sides, we have to end up with a little scaling factor called the Jacobian, and this scaling factor is going to be strictly positive, meaning our dx, so like I said, this is going to require your multivariable calculus knowledge, our dx is nothing but the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant times dy. And here's a neat little fact, if you take an orthogonal matrix and multiply it by a vector and then take the Jacobian, you are going to end up with either 1 or negative 1. This is just how it works out. But since we are taking the absolute value, it's just going to be 1 in the end, no matter if the Jacobian is negative 1 or 1. Meaning dx is actually equal to dy. You can try it out with the simpler matrix I gave you before and it's going to make perfect sense actually. And, and this is a result that generalizes to bigger matrices than 2 by 2 matrices, if they are orthogonal at least. Meaning we can rewrite this as, okay, our region really doesn't change, we are still in R to the n at the moment, e to the negative inner product of y with t times y, dy in this case. And now if we take a look at t times y, what is this actually? So t times y is nothing but, well, this matrix lambda 1, lambda n with zeros in all the other places, times, well, y1 till yn. Okay, and if we multiply this together, we are actually going to end up with, well, lambda 1, y1, da da da, lambda n, yn. And now we can plug this into here and take the inner product of this thing. How does the inner product work? Well, if we take the inner product of y1, yn, we are going to end up with, okay, those multiplied together, those first entries, so lambda 1, y1 squared, and add the next ones multiplied together, up until the nth member, lambda n, yn squared. And now we can plug this into here and see what we get. So we are having an integral over r to the n, e to the negative. Okay, now we have lambda 1, y1 squared, and then negative blah blah blah, negative lambda n, y n squared, d y1, blah blah blah, until d y n. <laughs> Those are a lot of integrals. And you see, this integral over r to the n is nothing but an integral over r, blah blah blah, times an integral over r, n times actually. And you see, we can use a certain theorem out of analysis, namely Papa Fubini in this case, if our integrand is strictly positive, everything does work out nicely and all those exponential functions are actually continuous, meaning we can just break this multiple integral up into the multiplication of every single integral. Meaning, in other words, we take the integral over r, e to the negative lambda 1, y1 squared, dy1, and multiply it together with the next one, blah blah blah, until we get integral over r, e to the negative lambda n, y n squared, d y n. <laughs> this is a lot of input, I know. But the cool thing is, we can now actually calculate those because well, those are just all Gaussian integrals. So the first one is going to evaluate to square root of pi over square root of lambda 1. This is going to go on until square root of pi over square root of lambda n in this case. And this is the product of, well, n things. So up here in the numerator we are going to get square root of pi to the nth power. And what are we going to get down here? Well, over square root of all the lambdas multiplied together. But I want you guys to notice something. All the lambdas multiplied together is nothing but the determinant of our t, just like what we found out in the previous video on this topic. So actually, we can generalize this right here to square root of pi to the nth power over square root of determinant of t. I'm going to get rid of this right here. I'm going to put this right here in blue. And this is our final result. So, 
this weird looking monster integral that we had up here turned into, well, some determinant and pi popping up and something to the nth power and this is absolutely amazing if you ask me. <laughs> And you see, if you just take a one by one matrix, meaning just a simple real number, which is positive, it satisfies this property of being a symmetric positive definite matrix. And well, you are just going to end up with the regular Gaussian integral in one dimension. But now we have generalized it to n dimensions and now you can get all the pussies in your local pub if you show them this beast right here. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and sub subscribe and recommend channel if you like. Also, I, once again, I want to thank you guys for supporting this channel in 2018. I just love you guys. You are so cool. You are commenting so much. It's absolutely amazing. And I hope I can work with you together also in 2019. And I guess I'm wishing you a flammable Sylvester, a flammable new year. And well, up until the next video. Have flamble day, I guess. See ya. Love you guys. Appreciate ya. Wow, 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 it's schneid. It's ist ja fast schon gute Video Qualität. Oh, okay. Oh, er ist fast hingefallen. Ja, der weiß nicht, was Schnee ist. Oh, der gute Junge. Oh. Ich lass mal ganz kurz.